Okay, so when you went, you were, you were in jail, was it federal or state? State. Okay. Did you serve with organized crime guys in state? Yes. All right. One of the things that we're always fascinated, and I get like a lot of private messages, public messages, et cetera. Do you get any preferential treatment or, you know, like Gene Umbrello said, even in state, which state is rough, the fact that he was an Italian kid, he went in kind of before he was hooked up, then after he was hooked up. They always kind of looked at Italians as like automatically being hooked up because they're there. And number two, not deference is probably not the right word, but treated with a certain level of respect. Did you kind of get that respect in state or did it not matter who the hell you were and you were fighting every day? Walk, walk us through your stint in jail before we go back to your well, time in this jail. It's, it's, first of all, it's, it's not, um, I, don't, I don't believe that to be the case. Um, okay. I was never in federal prison, maybe, maybe in federal prison, yeah. but there, you have a handful of people, if they hear your name ends in a vowel, they, yeah. they'll hit around with you and they'll make reference to the mob or whatever may be the case. But you know, there was, there was a saying that we had in there and it was, you know, back then in the eighties and nineties, people were wearing pinky rings, right? And they would say that you check your pinky ring in at the gate. Uh, and that went for everybody. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter if you were a friend, if you were an associate. So you kind of had to hold your own in there. I didn't really see any preferential treatment yeah. uh, to anybody because yeah. you're kind of all equal being locked up in the same place. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't think that was the case. At least I didn't see it. Where, where, where did you serve? Um, I was in a few places, but the bulk of my time was in Fishkill, uh, New now, York. Got it. Now, now in, in jail, did you just gravitate towards, like, did you hang out with wise guys in jail? And is that where you kind of, cause you don't just get, you know, I, I get how you went back to childhood friend. I get how you got like introduced quickly, but I'm yeah. guessing you probably hung out with some dudes that were connected and then by virtue of that, that probably meant something when you went out. So I know there's another story you're gonna tell me later about somebody who helped something in jail and leveraged it. We'll get to that in a little bit. But, but did that help you being in jail in that world? Oh, it's, you know, you're judged, you're judged by the way you carry yourself. Got it, and, okay. and, and that's really the answer. And I guess that goes for in there and out here too. That's and that's, that's just, that's just the way it was it wasn't that um um someone seen so and so with uh, a, a guy that's a, a friend in there and you know because of that if there's a problem there's not a problem for this guy you would still have a problem <laughs> you, had to, you had to handle yourself got it got it got it yeah. okay so so hold on so let's get back so so you get out john you meet john castellucci who's a, is a captain Correct. And get introduced. Introduced. So, give me kind of what happens and what happens next. Um. Well, there was an incident again in the restaurant, and okay. it was right before right before I met John. So, let's just say two days before Joey takes me to John, there's another incident. I'm in the restaurant. Anthony Guzzo is not there, and the which, which winds up becoming his wife, who was the owner. She becomes his wife later on, but at the time it's his girl and her son comes to me and tells me that there's a guy acting up in there. And he's another, it was crazy because every, everybody in that restaurant were big, uh, you know, another big monster guy, big, big guy. <laughs> and he was there and, it, and his brother-in-law was a Staten Island guy who I didn't know either one of them. And I went over to talk to the brother-in-law and just basically told him, tell your brother-in-law to calm himself down or he's going to wind up getting hurt. And he went, it's funny because he goes outside this guy and makes a telephone call and wants me to hear of all people who he's calling. He's calling big John. Oh, and he says, Hey, big John. Yes. He um, I'm standing there laughing because Joey tells me tomorrow we're going to go to Staten Island. <laughs> so I, I'm saying, look at this shit. So, yeah. So anyway, John calls up Joey and says, do me a favor. Uh, your friend, John is in this place and tell him, not to put his hands on this kid. He's my cousin, which he's not his cousin. Yeah. And Italian, you know, Italians, everybody's a cousin. Yeah, everybody's a cousin, right? So Joey calls me right away and says, where are you? And I tell him I'm, I'm in a restaurant. He says, 
do me a favor, John. Don't hit this guy. He says, this guy, John. I says, I'm not going to do it, but he's got to tell, you know, I want to tell him is the, the, the brother-in-law is out of hand. Yeah. And, and he's getting out of hand. So anyway, I go over to the guy and I say, listen, you just made a telephone call. I just got a call and I need you to go to your brother-in-law and tell him that he cannot act up in this place. And that's what I want you to do right now. And everything's going to be fine. That's what I need you to do. And he yeah. did it. And he, he admitted, he says, he's very drunk. He says, my brother-in-law is Greek. And not that that meant anything. And, and, you know, I'll talk to him and his wife's trying to, and I was, I was even more aggravated. I said, you mean his wife is in it? Yeah. He's got his, <laughs> and his daughter, he had a little daughter. 